duplication, rearrangement, and mutation of DNA contribute to genomic evolution. So in my section, I'm going to focus on two main points. How do extra copies of all four part of the genome arise and the evolution of proteins with different functions? The basis of change of the, at the gene level is a mutation. And it seems likely that the earliest forms had a minimal number of genes those that were necessary for either survival or reproduction, the basic necessities. And one aspect of evolution must have been an increase in the size of the genome, which we mentioned earlier as being the complete set of genetic material, with this extra genetic material providing gene diversification. Who can tell me what disease this little girl has? John? Down syndrome. Good. So this is a polyploidy, and an accident and meiosis can result in one or more sets of chromosomes known as a polyploidy. And although polyploidy can often be lethal, in some cases it could facilitate the evolution of genes. And here's a representation of this extra 21st chromosome. In a polyploid organism, one set of genes can provide the essential functions, and the genes in the extra sets can diverge by accumulating mutations, and these variations persist if the organism uh, carrying them survives and reproduces. So in this way, the genes can function and evolve as long as one copy is expressed. And here's a picture of the human chromosome two and two separate chimpanzee chromosomes. <clears throat> and the fusion of these two ancestral chromosomes in the human line led to the different haploid numbers in chimpanzee and humans. Humans having n equals 23 and chimpanzees n equals 24. <clears throat> The ancestral versions of current chimp chromosomes 12 and 13 looks like they fused end to end, forming the human chromosome 2. And here's a picture of human and mouse chromosomes. You can see that these segments of DNA are kind of in place in the mouse chromosomes 7, 8, 16, and 17. You notice how the different segments of the M sequences are expressed in the individual mouse chromosome. This suggests that the DNA sequence in each block has stayed together in the mouse and human lineages since the time they diverged from the common ancestor. Jacqueline, what's this process called? Yeah, good. And what is the actual site of crossing over? Does anyone know where the actual site of crossing over is? What's called? Synapses? No, the chiasma. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the chiasma, crossing over occurs, and this is where specific proteins at precisely corresponding points are broken and joined to the other chromatid. And you can see this by the multicolors in the segments of the chromosome, and this results in recombinant chromosomes, which provide genetic variation. Here's another example of crossing over, but in this case, unequal crossing over can result in one chromosome with a deletion and another with a duplication of a particular gene. So in the picture, there are misaligned chromosomes, and this leads to, here's a, this blue band is representative of a gene, and one chromatid has two genes and one has zero. Representing some crossing over. 